Hello, buddy. Welcome back to the Tim Man's Corner Channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tim Man Taylor, and today I'll be reacting to my third video for this Mr. Nightmare Marathon for you guys. And it's three disturbing true haunted house horror stories. Now, I explained in my short that I should have done it towards Halloween, but I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, react to it now because I know a lot of people like to celebrate Halloween all year round, kind of like Christmas. So that's what I'm doing here today. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the lights off, move the camera back up here for you guys, and let's get this reaction on the road and in the back. Oh, for only two years, there was this pop-up haunted house attraction that would open in October. It was unofficially called Haunted Hill House because there was some sign that looked like it was bought from Party City or something that was propped in front by the parking lot, and it said Haunted Hill House. The parking lot wasn't actually a parking lot at all, just grass that was designated as a parking area. This was the year they closed down, and this was the year my friends and I went. I went with Matt, Michael, and Eddie. We went on a Thursday night because we were in college and all of us had Fridays off, so it was definitely quieter than it would have been on a weekend. There was surprisingly no line for the ticket stand, and when we followed the directions to the entrance, there was only a really short line there, I'd say like four people ahead of me. What we didn't realize, though, is that they were only letting one person in at a time. We had no idea that was part of this haunted house. If anything, this would make it scarier. We shoved Michael in front to go first. I was second to last before Eddie. Every couple of minutes, they would tell the next person to go in. When Matt went in ahead of me, I actually started to get nervous. I hadn't done a haunted house since I was a little kid and I was with my family. Then it was my turn to go in, as this woman dressed in some bloodied costume opened the door and told me to enter. I stepped through the door, and as it shut behind me, I was in this dark building, lit up mainly by small flashing lights. As I walked through, I was faced with a bunch of gruesome props of mutilated dead corpses and other pretty horrific things. Once in a while, actors dressed in horrific costumes would jump from around corners or through little holes in the walls. And just about every single time they got me, because I'd jump. I was in some dark hallway separating two rooms, and I felt something brush up on me from behind. I let out a short scream as I turned, and in the darkness I could see a tall figure in front of me. I laughed after seeing it, then something I wasn't expecting happened next. Me personally, um... I would go through a haunted house, but I ain't going in there by myself. I know they're actors and everything, but you know what I mean? I'll be afraid of like, you know, you know, getting all riled up and maybe punching somebody. <laughs> the actor started pushing me down this dark hallway. I could hardly see anything. I was going along with it, thinking this was part of the attraction. I don't remember how long exactly I was allowing this actor to push me in the darkness. But eventually he stopped, and I heard a door close, and things went silent. I didn't know what was happening. I still thought this was part of the act, and I was definitely scared because it was pitch black. Then I felt hands grabbing me, but in a very weird way, not in a way that a haunted house actor should. I was being full-on grabbed, and so I pushed the person off and said, Get the fuck off me, dude. I stood there in silence now. I said, you're going too far, man. You can't touch people like that, thinking this was still just part of the haunted house act. I waited there, expecting the actor to progress me to the next part of the attraction or just do something, but nothing was happening. Enough time passed now that I knew this wasn't right, so I took out my phone, even though they told us not to take our phones out at any time during the attraction. I turned on the flashlight and found myself in a storage room with props and janitorial equipment but I'd be lying if I said that was the first thing I noticed. The first thing that caught my attention was the tall man standing three or four feet away from me. He didn't look like an actor at all. He wasn't wearing a costume. He was just wearing all black with a black face mask covering half his face. I looked for the door as I said, what are you doing, dude? He didn't say anything. He just started making these motions with his arms as if he was acting like he was supposed to be a character. I found the door and left the room. I used my phone's flashlight to navigate back down the dark hall the direction we came. When I found the next actor, who yelled at me to turn off my flashlight. I told them I was violated and assaulted by somebody who may or may not work for the attraction, and I wanted to get out of there. 
I could tell the actor was probably just some teenager not much younger than me, and he didn't know what to do really. He dropped his character act and told me to just keep walking that way and that I'm almost to the end. I asked where his boss would be. He said I'd have to go back to the ticket stand as the little manager's office is attached to the ticket stand. So I continued the rest of the haunted house, speed walking, making it clear I was just trying to get out. And a few minutes later, I was out. I found all three of my friends who were confused how I ended up getting out last. I told them what happened and that we all went to the ticket stand and I asked for the manager. The worker said that he wasn't there tonight, but that he'd be back tomorrow. I told the worker about what happened. She said she would alert the team about it. I requested my money back because of it. She gave me back my 30. It was the next day that a girl from our college who we all knew posted on Facebook that she was sexually assaulted by someone in the same haunted house the night before, the night we were also there. This was oh. the reason the place was eventually shut down that month. And I reached out to her on Facebook. It sounded like we had the same exact experience. Only the aggressor got a lot more physical with her. She pressed charges on the owner of the attraction for, I'm assuming, negligence. The attraction staff, of course, swore that that man who assaulted the two of us didn't actually work there. I'm sure that's the truth, but I don't understand how they didn't have proper security measures in place to prevent something like this from happening. Yeah, you would think that uh, they would have uh, proper security in place so they know who's working there and who's not working there. That's the scary to think about. And then this other girl got sexually assaulted by this guy. Mm. If they had the proper security in place, this would not happen. This was the first and last time I ever went to a haunted house attraction. I live in Fort Worth, Texas, and every year there's this big haunted house attraction that opens up. A few of my friends wanted to go this year, and I figured it's time I just finally experience a haunted house. For a little early context, I had a very troubled childhood that's caused me to develop PTSD, but I'll get more into that later. It was a weekend, so nobody wanted to go into this sober. My friend Noah hosted a little pregame for all of us. It was going to be six of us, my three guy friends and two of their girlfriends. We all smoked and drank in Noah's backyard, everyone thinking it would make the experience more fun. We bought our tickets for the attraction on their website while we were pre-gaming. I rarely ever smoked weed because it makes me kind of paranoid. But I guess tonight I wanted to try smoking again and see if I could overcome that barrier. And I felt good actually. I think the mix of alcohol and weed kind of canceled out the usual negative thoughts I would have from just smoking alone. Eventually, we called an Uber to the attraction, which was like 20 minutes away from Noah's house. There was a half-hour line. The place was pretty busy. We made friendly with the people in line ahead of us. I was pretty cross-faded, honestly, but I wasn't gone. Like, I remember just about everything that happened. That's one thing I would never do if I'm going to a haunted house attraction. Smoke weed and drink. Because you never know what your mind will be seeing. Because if you sell something that was at the haunted house attraction, you'd be like, is this real or is my mind playing tricks on me, you know? When we got to the front, I started feeling a bit woozy, but I didn't say anything to my friends. We entered the haunted house, and from the start, there was a lot of screaming and intensity. The actors were really good, but intense, and it was starting to give me anxiety. I was starting to realize how not okay I was, and how much of a mistake getting high was. One of the haunted house actors must have realized how scared and quiet I looked, and he chose to get in my face trying to scare me, yelling and making noises. I'm not going to lie, I was starting to internally freak out, but I was trying to keep it together in front of my friends. This haunted house was going on for what felt like forever, and in my condition, every single jump scare made me almost shit my pants. All the flesh and lights and fog really made this whole experience even more trippy and surreal. We came to this room lit up with an eerie red glow, with a bloodied man dressed as a guy in a suit and top hat yelling at us, part of the act. But behind him, in the corner of the room, was a guy who wasn't dressed as anything. He was just standing there looking at me, into my soul. And as I realized I was looking at the face of my father, I let out a scream straight from my stomach, as I felt every hair in my body stand up. The room went silent, and my friends looked at me laughing at first, thinking I was joking around. But when they saw I was serious, one of the girls grabbed me and asked what's wrong. I said, it's my dad. I pointed to the corner where there was now no one standing. 
I remember all my friends and the actor being confused, and everyone could tell I was not messing around. My friends knew about my troubled past. There's no one there, one of my friends said. The actor apparently asked my friends if I was okay. I was now in the middle of a full-on panic attack, yelling, I want to leave, I want to leave. Noah left with me through a side exit, and he sat with me while our friends finished the attraction. It wasn't cheap, so I wasn't going to make them all come out with me. As we sat outside the place, Noah told me I shouldn't have smoked so much, as he tried to assure me that my dad wasn't in there. It was just hallucinating. So my father used to abuse my siblings and I. I'm the oldest, so I remember the most of it. He left us and our mom one day and never came back when I was 10. My close friends know about this to a certain extent, so I didn't have to explain to Noah. When our friends were done, they met us at a Wendy's nearby where I was just trying to eat to help calm me down. I was embarrassed, but my friends didn't judge, thankfully. Not to my face, at least. I went home earlier than everyone else. I didn't want to spoil their nights. When I got home, I knocked out right away, I guess because of how drunk and high I was. That night, I was having a nightmare about the scene at the haunted house. And my father, standing in the corner of the room, he was saying, wake up, Charlie. And I did wake up. I woke up in my dark room in the middle of the night to see my father towering over my bed. Oh, hey, looking no. down at me with his eyes open super wide. It was literally this towering, nine-foot-tall version of my father, bending down with his body contorting in an impossible way. Dude, it's not your father, okay? You're still high and a little bit drunk, so you thinking about your dad is making this image pop up in your head. That's what I'll be telling this guy. When I saw it, it took me a few seconds for me to digest what I was looking at and scream straight from my stomach again. My mom came rushing in and turned on the lights. And the apparition was gone. My heart was racing and my blood ran cold. I cried to my mom that I saw dad. It was one of the most scarring nights of my adult life. I don't touch weed or any substances anymore besides light alcohol. And I'm never going to a haunted house attraction again after that. There you go. Don't touch the weed because it'll make you start hallucinating weird stuff just like you're seeing now. But I'm sorry that it made you uh, not want to go back to a haunted house. I mean, the haunt actors are there just to have fun, just to scare you. During COVID, I thought it would be fun to get a job at a local haunted house attraction. My friend Marissa was already working there, and she told me they were looking for new actors and actresses. She pulled some strings and got me a job after I met with the owner. There were multiple sections to the haunted house attraction, including three haunted houses and the haunted corn maze. On my first day on the job, there was some slight rehearsing my character and just demonstrating my acting skills to one of the supervisors who was on duty. My role for the night was assigned to be a damsel in distress. And this meant I was going to be tied to a pole and yelling at the guests to help me as they walked past me. Of course, all guests would be told before entering not to touch any of the actors or actresses, so they would know not to actually untie me when I'm screaming, help me. So before opening time, the supervisor slash coordinator, Jeremiah, walked me to my post. Quite literally my post, because I'd be tied to a wooden post in the corn maze. I was honestly surprised that I actually had to be tied up and not just pretend. I asked how I would go to the bathroom and such. He said there would be short breaks between sessions. He also said there would be another supervisor nearby if I should need anything, which made me feel a little better. Why do I get the feeling that she's going to be tied up and then somebody's going to come out and like actually try to take her or something and the people don't know that it's real or they'll think it's an act? Oh, boy. Once he walked away, I was left alone. There were a bunch of sound effects and scary ambiance loops echoing through the cornfield from the various speakers hidden throughout the maze. Pretty soon, a little air horn sounded in the distance, indicating that the attraction was open and to get into character. I was nervous but excited. Since I was more so in the middle of the corn maze, it wasn't until a few minutes passed that the first guest would be passing me. I started to put on my best performance as a damsel in distress, so I screamed and fake cried, begging everyone who passed for help, saying he's coming back soon, untie me. Some people would play along and say things back, and I'd improvise responses in character. Everyone was wearing face masks because of COVID, so I couldn't see people's entire faces. Eventually, two male guests who looked to be in their 30s walked past looking at me, not saying a word. 
One of them slowed down as he just shot me this gaze with his big eyes that quite honestly creeped me out. And kept walking and disappeared further into the maze. This was around the time I was starting to realize there would be long gaps between guests sometimes. I could suddenly hear someone brushing through the crops nearby. I was wondering if it was a staff member. The guests weren't supposed to stray off the path. I turned completely around and saw two men emerging from the crops towards the pole I was tied to. The same two men from before. Something wasn't right. I broke character and said, you guys can't stray off the path. And then one of them laughed under their mask. And the two men started speaking in some other language, I think Russian. Then one of them walked back to the path, but in the opposite direction that the guests are supposed to go. He just started standing there, keeping watch, it seemed, while the other one started to inappropriately grab me. I knew what was happening immediately, and I started screaming bloody murder, saying, help, this isn't part of the act. I called out things like, I'm being assaulted. And moments later, one of the supervisors emerged, seeing if I was okay. By then, the two men had already run away. I was untied and escorted out of the maze. I called my parents, and they insisted I just leave right now. I left, and Jeremiah and one of the other supervisors said I'd be paid for the night, and if I didn't want to come back, they'd understand, but to just keep them in the loop. I wish I could say it was over, though. On my drive home, I was extra cautious to make sure I wasn't being followed. I noticed halfway home that the same white car was behind me the whole time. I started making turns down random streets, and when the white car stayed behind me every single time, I knew I was being followed. I knew I had to find the nearest police precinct, so I typed in police station on Google Maps, and I started driving to it. They followed me the whole way until I pulled into the parking lot of the precinct. Then they kept driving. I never saw the car again. I sat in my car for 10 minutes before finally turning it back on and driving home, confirming every few seconds that I wasn't being followed. I didn't return to work at that haunted house attraction again. Hey, I don't blame you for not returning to that haunted house attraction. Because uh, if somebody tried to kidnap me while I was working there, I'm not going back there because I uh, don't want to, you know, be taken away and not be seen again, you know. But that was a smart move of going to the police station and act like you're going to the police station for help or something. Because once they see that, they're going. They're not going to mess with you no more. But I would be taking pictures of the license plate when they move by and what type of car it is so I can make a report later if I have to, just so I can keep an eye out on that car. But anyway, uh, that's going to be it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on those post notifications for more Mr. Nightmare content like this. This has been another successful installment of the Tin Man's Corner Channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tin Man, Taylor, and I said that's a wrap, and have a nice day.